good morning. Oh, I'm sitting outside. It's a pretty day. Um, the sun's coming up over there. <laughs> I'll try not to rock because if I rock, this is what happens. Ah, bright light. It's up behind some branches of a tree right now, so I will try not to move too much. That just really blinded me. <laughs> um, yeah, so my last video was about my friend Molly dying and how tired I was from that ordeal. And uh, this one, I think, is going to be about the effects of stress on somebody's body, someone who has lupus and fibromyalgia and plantar fasciitis and yeah, all, all that yucky stuff that I used to deal with on a regular basis is back. Um, I hurt from my scalp all the way down to my feet. I am again, once again, getting out of bed and hobbling to the bathroom because it hurts so bad. On my when I stand on my feet, um, let's see if I can get the sun off my face. Um, yep, maybe not. Just gonna look silly. Uh, yeah, my plantar fasciitis got really bad. Uh, for those of you who don't know what that is, it's a very painful condition in the feet. Um, last time I had this, I was going for. Uh, What's that word? Not rehab. Maybe it is rehab. Physical therapy. Um, to get help for it. And, uh, yeah, I just, I don't want to. So, I'm going to try to deal with it myself. Um, yeah, the sun's going to be on my face now. It's moving from behind the branch. Uh, in addition to that, my neck and shoulders hurt terribly. Uh, having muscle spasms as well as pain in my back. My lower back hurts. My neck hurts. My uh, Now I have, I think I mentioned that I, maybe I did, I don't remember, but I have um, tendonitis in my, I had it in my left elbow, and now I feel like it's in my shoulder my left shoulder, as well as my right elbow and right shoulder, because it's very painful to move both my arms, which really sucks. And uh, I'm also not sleeping well. And my skin feels scaly again. You know, all the signs of I'm in a flare, a really bad flare. I had some sores in my mouth last week. That's another thing that happens when I'm in a bad flare from stress. Um, my throat hurts every now and then, on and off. I'm back to having reactions, like allergic reactions to foods. <clears throat> I, I always had that um, situation with the lupus, but when I'm in a bad flare, water can set me off. I can start choking like I'm having an, a, you know, an actual allergic reaction to a food. And I, uh, so I'm all phlegmy from that because I'm, I react to everything, including I'm drinking some vitamin C juice right now. I love this juice. Yummy juice. Um, anyway, so yeah, I've been having a rough time. And then, so that's what stress has done to my body. It threw me into a flare. Even though I was trying not to stress, you know, it's hard not to when your friend is dying and everybody around you is freaking out. And <clears throat> I couldn't be one of the people freaking out. I just couldn't. I had to. Uh, I had to stay calm. I had to be supportive. Let's go over here. Get out of the sunshine. Sorry, Jack. Touch the kitty. Let me see Jack. I don't know if you can see him, but that's Jack. So, let's see. Where are we going to go sit? Yeah, still in my pajamas. <laughs> that's how you get me today. Uh, yeah, we'll sit in this chair over here. And I think I'll open the umbrella. Uh, hopefully, okay, it's only been five minutes. 
Hopefully no bug jumps on me and freaks me out, makes me do the dance, the bug dance. Here we go. We're gonna open the umbrella so we can tilt it. <laughs> it makes a silly sound, sorry. Uh, yeah, I didn't, so I didn't come out here planning on doing a video, but once I got out here, it seemed like a good idea. So, that is what I'm doing. Alright, this umbrella is acting kind of weird. Hopefully it doesn't fall on my head. <laughs> okay, so back to the effects of stress. Back to the effects of stress on the body. A body that's already has a compromised immune system. Like mine. Dang it, the sun is still getting me. <laughs> okay, here. Let's <laughs> just do this. Oh my goodness. Yeah, this is what you get when you don't plan on making a video and you come outside to do it. Here, something to lean on again. Alright. So. There. <laughs> yeah, I'm tired. My hair is messy. This is morning hair. <clears throat> I think it looks like this all the time, but, you know, it gets a little neater when I deal with it. So, uh, what else is going on? I'm also feeling mildly depressed, but I think um, that is due to the fact that I'm grieving. I miss my friend. I miss Molly a lot. You know, being her caretaker, I couldn't, I couldn't fall apart in front of her because she needed me to be strong. <clears throat> so I did that at home. Um, I would come home and I'd cry about it or fuss about it, whatever, you know, the situation. Um, I don't know. What is that button? Hold on. Oh, that's the mute button. <laughs> um, so a couple days ago, I realized that I'm my stump. Oh yeah, the other thing that's been going on as well. This is all part of the flare. Is I've been having really bad stomach aches, and I've gotten back to where I'm running to the bathroom a lot because uh, I have diarrhea again. That's uh, that's stress. I'm not sick. That's stress. But it feels like I'm sick. It feels like a. It almost feels like a tummy virus. And uh, my skin hurts. It's not just scaly. It hurts again. Um, I'm restless. And my heart's doing its stupid... Um, it used to do this back in the day when I stressed all the time. Uh, it would race for no reason at all. So my anxiety is back up again. Um, so, yeah. And so back to having to stay strong for my friend Molly. And now I'm dealing with her daughter, um, who I just met through all this. You know, I'd met her a few times at Molly's house, but we weren't friends. I just, you know, acquaintance. She knew me as one of Molly's AA friends. And that's all. Um, she had no idea that this was coming <clears throat> down the road. Um, I'm sorry, I keep saying um, sorry. So anyway, I've been there for Kathy, her daughter, who has been giving, given the most terrible job of all, which is to clean out her mother's house. And I could not just walk away from her and let her do that <clears throat> by herself. I just couldn't do it. And uh, it confuses people because, like I said, me and Kathy were not friends. It was me and, my, me and her mother that were friends. And people keep asking her why I'm still around, like it's some creepy thing that I'm still around. I just don't understand that. Um, wouldn't you do that for your friend's child? I mean, I know she's not a child, but <clears throat> I loved Molly so much that I would do anything for her. And this is one of the things I'm willing to do for her to be there for her daughter while her daughter is going through a very difficult time. Um, so I have to be strong around Kathy. 
I cannot fall apart like I feel like falling apart. Uh, it's a little harder doing this with Kathy than it was, you know, being strong for Molly because Molly was still alive when I was being strong for Molly. <clears throat> and, uh, excuse me, see, allergies, that's because I drank some of my juice. Um, with Kathy, you know, I'm sitting there having to, not having to, but I sit there and I hold her hand or hug her or just listen to her and watch her cry and just bawl and cry and, you know, also not wanting to be here. And I can't fall apart during those moments, but it does bring up my own emotions because, again, I miss Molly a lot. And I know she's not truly gone. I know that. You know, just physically she's in a different place. Um, and we all have different beliefs about that. I know we don't... I believe that we don't just disappear, you know. And Molly's made herself known already a few times since she's left her body. But... I realized the other day, just a couple, a couple day, two days ago, that some of my anxiety, some of my tummy ache is because I'm not crying enough. Um, because when I leave Kathy, I come home, I have home responsibilities, and so I'm trying to deal with my home life. And I've been running, and my fridge broke in the middle of all this, which is, that was another scary ordeal. I woke up one morning smelling smoke and ran around the house that was filled with smoke and couldn't figure out where it was coming from and <sighs> thought it was an electrical fire. Turns out it was something under my fridge was melting. Uh, yeah. So yeah, three or four days later we had a new fridge and all the food that I had in the freezer went bad. I tried to keep save it. I did. I had it in coolers and... <clears throat> yeah, toting very heavy coolers around wasn't very helpful for my arms and my shoulders, my elbows and shoulders, but anyway, yeah, I'm also very self-conscious about my weight lately. Um, so I need to cry more. Yeah, so I did. I cried more uh, yesterday. I cried more two days ago, and I'm sure I'll cry today. Um. I'm somebody that cries probably at least once a day anyway. And uh, doing all this be strong stuff, um, which is good, you know, because you're being there for someone, you're supporting them. But if you're one of those people who does that, don't forget to cry yourself. <clears throat> because uh, it is a release of tension. It is a release of, you know, grief and... It, it is very helpful. The day, two days ago when I started to cry, like really cry, my chest started to hurt. And, you know, that's because I've been holding it all right there in my heart, right in my heart area. <clears throat> and then I felt nauseous because I also hold it in my stomach. And my, you know, I'm sure that my neck and shoulders hurt because of how tense I was the entire month that I was dealing with Molly. So, Yeah. Next go round, when I'm being someone's caretaker, which I know will happen, because I'm thinking of actually doing this professionally. Um, and if I'm doing it professionally, it won't be with people I know all the time. But next go round, I need to figure out a balance of taking care of myself through the situation. Because I can't, not that I can't, um, I don't want my body to go through this kind of flair every time I'm being kind and helpful to someone, you know? I just don't. Um, you know, grief can also throw you into a flare, and, but you can't avoid grief when it's a death of a loved one. That's just, you know, part of life. You will grieve. And, uh, and it takes what, it, you know, it takes as long as it takes. It takes time. Time's the only thing that'll lessen the pain in the tiniest of increments for some of us, <clears throat> but anyway, so there's an update on me, I'm feeling pretty crappy, today I'm not going, uh, me and Kathy both are taking a break from her mom's house, uh, I went over there last night just to walk around, make sure everything was alright, and I instantly felt sick when I walked in, because Molly's not there, the house was a dark, 
There was no sounds. And Molly was not there. And that's the hardest part of all of it, is that Molly physically wasn't sitting on the couch waiting to, you know, to greet me with her beautiful smile and her pretty eyes. And it's just quiet. Molly's not there. So. Uh, and for those of you who know what's going on with my son, <coughs> they shipped him three hours from here. And he'll be there for nine months, for sure. Um, nine months, for sure. Maybe longer. Uh, and I haven't been approved for visitation yet, so I can't even go see him yet. But, you know, that's stressful, too. My son is that far away from home. And I really hate it. But there it is. Okay, I've gone over 15 minutes. I'm at 16-minute mark, so I probably should say I love you guys and uh, I'll check in again soon sorry for the scattered video and the ums and the <laughs> traveling from my swing to the table and all that stuff so thank you for all the comments on my last video I love you guys bye all right turn this off <laughs>